It's the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey and the crew. Wake that ass up! It's the Beat Break Morning Show. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're rocking with the best. The architect here, Sean Garvey, along DJ with my compadre, DJ Rolo. Ah. What's that in it? Woo! Woo! What's going on, fam? Man. Woo! I'm just ready, man. I'm ready. I got the caffeine in me. I got the caffeine. Good, good, good. I got the Red Bull in me. I got the, Red, got the Red Bull. Bull. All right. Substituting the Red Bull for the wine. I'll get into that in just a few moments on why okay. I'm substituting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Griff in the nah. building. The Griff man. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's yeah, going yeah. on? Salute. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, man. How you doing? Griff, I, can't I know complain. I already asked you that already. Yeah, yeah. You know, I ain't about to complain. Yeah, man. You ready Paper to have boy, a great time this morning? Congrats. Paper boys, what? baby, you know complain. <laughs> you getting that paper, huh? Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I was telling you offline that I am digging the beer. You got the corona. I don't mean to tease you. You got the corona beer beer going on there. I don't even look at that, look at that like that. I take it as a compliment, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You see me peppers in there, boy, is wisdom, boy. <laughs> yeah, you I agree. <laughs> I agree. You know, I'm thinking about just letting the hair grow on my face. I don't right. have that much on my face right now, but I'm probably going to be ending up looking like you towards the end of the year. I got to right. give it uh, <laughs> some years. Oh, so you're going to yeah. wait till you get to my size and then all right, I'm going to let it really grow, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking like, baby. Roll right. him so faded into the black, you can't even see his beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's black Let black. me turn on some light. Let me turn on some light. Maybe that's the reason why. Let me get on some light because I want people to see. Get, yeah, get really some sunlight in your life, man. <laughs> yeah, man. We got the Griff in the building, the Griff man in the building, man. ladies and gentlemen. And DJ Roland, we're waiting on a few other people to join in coming to you from the Beat Break 87 FM, Beach One Network Studios in the ATL. Make sure you download that podcast. FM app to your smartphone and to your mobile device ASAP. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot of great programming on the podcast FM app, and it's free. It's free. All you got to do is just go online to BeatBreakRadioFM.com. And speaking of which, we are coming to you live on BeatBreakRadioFM.com, simulcasting on ThinkingOutLoudNetwork.com. Make sure you check them out as well, Thinking Out Loud Network. And don't forget to follow us on all your social media at Beat Break Radio. So we got a lot of things to cover, ladies and gentlemen. I am so happy that the sun is back out and the women are coming out with the sundresses already, showing yeah. off their legs, showing off their skin, and uh, showing off their mouth and lips for the first time in almost in over a year now with the mask off yeah yeah man i, I don't know how i feel about that whole mask off thing right now doug i, I ain't yeah, yeah, they, not, they got some got some bad dental work so don't be smiling <laughs> you got some bad dental work <laughs> mm. if you don't have a smile like us fellas right now yeah don't don't, don't keep your mask on all right <laughs> <laughs> I still I don't think I'm a bang with it though. I don't think I'm 100 comfortable with it yet, man. You know what I mean? I'm too OCD to just bop out there, you know, in a large enough crowd, no mask. I don't trust yeah. people like that, man. Not yet. You right. know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. I'm the same. Yeah, I, I, I think I it's, still it's, work uh -huh. it's premature. You know what I mean? I still bop with mine for real. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I, I still walk around with the mask on. Uh, you know, of course, the big day came out a few days ago. Our president. Uh, Chief Commander or Commander in Chief, I should say, uh, President Joe Biden. I was about to say Governor Brian Kemp Ugh, for no, a moment. No, I don't know. He's been on my no, mind no, lately. No. He's been on my mind lately over the past few days, but we get into that also. <laughs> but um, All right. yeah, man, um, President Joe Biden came out, announced to the entire world that uh, if you have been vaccinated, you can walk freely without a mask if you have not keep your mask on he really wanted to say keep your damn mask on but we'll get into that in just a few I moments that. i saw that i saw that <laughs> we're, going, we're going to talk about it on the morning show in just a few moments all right uh, a lot of people feel some type of way about it 
Fact. And it's gonna tie and it's gonna tie in with the gas shortage. Right. In which we're gonna talk about as well, too. But back to the ladies, because we wanna start off the show by uh t- sharing some stories. But the past few days over the weekend, saw a lot of women coming out uh looking very comfortably, I should say. Mm-hmm. Like I was I almost tried to holler at one or two. There was actually a festival. <laughs> That took place in Powder Springs, not far from where I live. Shout out to all of the attendees that attended the uh, festival uh, at in, in Powder Springs. It was a great turnout. Great food, right. live entertainment. I even bought an antique. Well, it's not so much of an antique. It, it could be considered as an antique in a, a few years from now. But I ended up purchasing, purchasing this big American flag, right? But it's a black American flag. I might show it to you all on the next not video the Trump, podcast. Not the Trump one, because you know they have the, uh, a Trump one that is a black American flag too. It's not a Trump one. No, nope, okay, it's not. not a Trump one. No, okay. make it show. No, no. <laughs> hey, hey, they better not even say Trump twenty twenty on the or back. Twenty twenty four. Or twenty twenty four. It better not say that on the back. <laughs> Let me, ask you something. Let me ask you something before the thought slipped my mind. What is your perspective, even though he the past now, you know, it's time that came and gone. What is your perspective on Trump? How you feel about him? Me? Yeah. I'm glad he's out. Shit. I, I, that's, I, I was just glad that nigga out. That, that, that that's, I, that I call him a nigga because he's phobia. ignorant. That's what niggas stand for. Ignorance. That fool is gone. And I can't believe that the people who or part of the same party still think he's the leader. And I'm thinking, dudes, women, what is wrong with y'all? Why y'all supporting a fool that lied and can't accept it? It's like when 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 he won the presidency back in 2016 and, and Hillary Clinton conceded, she ain't say nothing about the, the voting, mm-hmm. nothing. And now, because he lost, being a big ass baby, that he lost, <laughs> you're gonna uh say, oh, it was stolen, it was it was robbed, and all that stuff. Right. Why can't you accept defeat? Damn, like the Atlanta Falcons had to accept the damn defeat when we got ass whipped from the New England Patriots. Oh. We ain't like it, but damn, we had to accept it. Right. That's how we really feel right now. Yeah. That's how what's we your, feeling this morning. What's your yes. take on him, Garvey? I had to I had to say it like that. I mean, I'm glad that fool ain't in there, and they shouldn't support his ass no more. So I think he's the leader. Of, he's a leader of shit. That's what he's a leader of. Okay, he don't need to be a leader of nothing but his own damn pockets. That's it. Mm-hmm. What's your take on the government? government? Um, my take on it is that my take on it is that it, he came, he conquered, and he's gone. He conquered the uh, what? To, he conquered what though? I think he conquered. <laughs> what politics look like nowadays in the essence of, okay, anybody can be president these days. Mm. And um, I think also too, that to Trump is, it's just a title. So like if you're working at a nine to five job, right. And you've been promoted to a, a different position than the position that you had and you don't do it well in this new position. But you don't care. You you making a lot of money. It, it says it here on your resume that you have done this at this job, right. and then now after four years, you leave the company. You either quit or you got fired. It's okay. just a job title. All right. To me, is uh, it's just a job title. It doesn't hurt or does anything to Trump because right now Trump is probably sitting on a beach, drinking pina colada and laughing at all the stuff that's happening right now under Biden's watch. Um, that's how I feel about it. Right. But I do have, you know, of course, apathy for the people who had to deal with some of the stuff that Trump laid down in the office that a lot of people didn't agree with. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it, it, at the end of the day, it's like a nine to five job. You clock in, you do your job. You don't do it well, you're like, oh, I don't care. I don't care if they fire me. 
I just go somewhere else and chill. That's my take on it. <laughs> okay, I can, I can respect that. I can respect that. Both points of view, both perspectives. I, I can respect that. Yeah, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So back to the women. <laughs> That's more fun. <laughs> That's like, I, don't know how we I, I, I played that one cool. You ain't hear me say nothing. <laughs> I just got perspective, but you know. Yeah. Go ahead, but what, what's, your, what's your perspective on it, real quick, uh, Griff? Griff, man. We, we can get back to that, man. You know, you want to keep it on the lighter note, we can get back to that. No, no, what, what, you, know, you got a, well, you probably will talk about it on the off the air, but you, you have a very different perspective on it. Oh, mine's is a little more, uh, I think mine's a little more direct. Okay. You want to get you want to get into the short version? Yeah, fuck it. He's a piece of shit. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank but, you. <laughs> I do. I do have to say this too, though. I do firmly believe his the incorporation of Trump as president, even with all the things he fucked up, to me was beneficial for the people because it opened people's eyes to just how much we need each other and how little we need government. Mm. Okay, I you know take on that. I take on that. Trump, Trump didn't just get to quit his job. The people got rid of that ass. The people got rid of, him. particularly Georgia. Yeah, the people got his <laughs> ass up out of there. I like mm -hmm. what, what what came of that. You know, um, the way people started to focus more on people, what we need, what we don't need, what we can incorporate without the powers that be, and actually becoming more of a collective. His whole movement was to be divisive, but it didn't do nothing but make the people more collective. So to me, he was a necessity. For the four years he had, that son of a bitch was a necessity so that we could snap out of the bullshit and figure out what we needed to do collectively to make things more beneficial for us. That to me was important. Mm. Ain't nothing about Trump I like. With the exception of the fact that he came in and showed his ass. If he hadn't have done that, a lot of the things that take shape right now regarding the people wouldn't be in play. I got to give him credit for that. Him being an ignorant orange bastard put us in a position to start focusing more on each other. We needed him for that. Mm. We needed him yeah. for that. Yeah. So he was that uh, that kick in the ass that we needed, basically. Because I heard exactly. somebody say that. I heard somebody say that, uh, mention that in yeah. a past conversation that we had. He was like that, you know, that ass kicker that we needed because we can at times get very, very comfortable in the state that we in. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, moving forward, you got to find the four years that Trump's been in office as a very huge teachable moment. You know what he yeah, was? A, Trump was the iron ankle bracelet on an elephant. Mm. He okay. was our iron ankle bracelet on an elephant. It took us to realize that there was never really a lot going to change. We just had that misconception. Gotcha. So, like mm. I said, man, that guy was needed. I appreciate him for coming in and fucking up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Hell the fuck up. Right. <laughs> That's my take. I am, I am, I am the Griff man, and I approve this message. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got Michelle Dodds Bird on the line finally. Michelle, you there? I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, we see a okay. we see a telephone symbol though. Okay, yeah, because I'm still driving. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just in a better uh, space, so yeah. Oh, but I'm gonna be okay. careful. I got nah. hands free. I'm hands free. Yeah, please, please stay hands free. You know, we still have that law in place here in Georgia. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, indeed. You know, uh, you coming in, we were um, we were talking about three different things within the 30 seconds <laughs> we, <laughs> we spent into the podcast. But uh, we was talking about, actually, no, you know what? We, we might as well go ahead and get into uh, the stories here that we wanted our listeners to uh, know about. You know, just to kind of like start things off on a uh, comedic note. Because right. that's what we're known for. That's what we're known for here on the morning show. We're known to be funny and, and be comical with it while touching on serious issues, though. But DJ Rollum and I, myself, Sean Garvey, 
uh, we have a story to tell. We have some stories to tell, especially with what happened to me over the weekend. But I'm going to let DJ Roland go first. And he told me a little bit about this off the air. Uh, but, but go ahead. Uh, you have a story. Actually, it's not something that you was involved in. But you have a friend that you know who um, felt some type of way about this particular situation. Okay. Uh, it's just a general question for everyone to answer. It's a general question, okay? It's a general question first, but we'll lead into what, what my story is about. He were a okay. jump in his bag. He were a yeah. jump in his bag. <laughs> now, Michelle, what? Michelle, don't, well, before you go into your question, DJ Roland, Michelle, just keep an open mind. Yes. <laughs> Please, keep an open just mind. Just keep an open mind. Uh, will do, fellas. I will. I'm open. I'm, okay. My mind right. is open. Okay. I'm going right. to ask you first, Michelle. I'm going to ask you first. Okay. Are you in a, first of all, is the, uh, um, are you in a current relationship? Yes or no? No. Okay. All right. Now, if you were in a relationship, what would be the worst thing your mate could do? Mm. Lie, lie and cheat. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the second part on cheat. If okay. he cheats, what type of cheating is like really bad or something you could be forgiving him on? Oh, we 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 have degrees on this, like yeah. different, <laughs> different, different levels. There's yeah. different levels to cheating. Yeah. Like, uh, okay, it's almost like, well, I slept with her, but I didn't slip it all the way in. Is it that level? Is are we talking like that? Like, <laughs> like what are we talking about? Or she did all the work and I was just there, or what? What are we talking about, gentlemen? Like, is that... Hey, all right, okay. I mean, that's, that's your perspective of cheating, right? okay? Uh, it, okay, all right. Uh, I mean, you're saying different levels. Um, that's different levels. Guess, that's, that's, you, you said it, you answered it. Yeah, <laughs> I was on the way in. I, I, yeah. I need protection. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, I just did yeah. it in the ass. You know? <laughs> well, or she did all the work, or I, was, right. I just showed up. Um, right. Another level is is uh, a baby coming out of that, you know, like a, you know, creating another life because, mm -hmm. you know, that's really that's something you can't return. So that is a family now. You know what I mean? So it's different. So there's different levels of cheating. I will agree. Yeah. And then there's if there's huh. there is emotional cheating, right? right? So then there's cheating where you're not even physical with the person, right. but you you have an emotional exchange. And you're intimate with them in conversation that you're not, you wouldn't be sharing with me if, they, if this person was with me and cheating on me. That would be a form, another form of, I guess, unfaithfulness or just really, you know, pushing the envelope, if you will. Okay. I, I, I agree with the pushing the envelope part. Being unfaithful, I don't know how I feel about that. But that is the degree that just crossed my mind, you know, that mental level of cheating, that emotional level of cheating, then that, that physical level of cheating. There's degrees to it. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. All right. Okay. Do you, do you agree, Sean? Do I agree that there are levels yeah. to cheating? Yeah. Cheating is cheating at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. that, that, cheating. Okay, cheating, I mean, it can, emotional cheating, mental cheating, physical cheating. Cheating is cheating at the end of the day. Now, that's flirting. There's a difference between flirting and cheating. Right. You can kind of somewhat get away with flirting, but with cheating. But you're, pushing, well, you're pushing an envelope with flirting to see if you have that option available for your ass to cheat. But, but see, there's Absolutely. Those, but, but there's also there's also levels to flirting as well, too, because we're in the industry, right? All of us are in the yeah, media yeah. entertainment industry. Yeah. We we flirt. We flirt a lot for whether we are still in a relationship or not. We flirt. I could come across a actress, a beautiful woman, and say, oh, wow, she's beautiful. Like, she's she's gorgeous. She's lovely. You know, I, I mean, that type of thing. But if it's like a situation where, oh, Freaking. damn, she, she's beautiful. She's gorgeous, man. If I wasn't with my girlfriend, if I wasn't with my wife, I would smash her tonight. I'm going to tell you where flirting get tricky, yo. When you start incorporating these two elements, like flirting, and being honest. You could tell mm. a woman she's attractive just being honest don't necessarily mean you flirting with her. You're just paying her a compliment where women's do. I think it's how you say it. I think it's the context at the yeah. end of the day. It's how yeah. you say it. Yeah. 
I agree. Cause, yeah, because I I can be like, oh wow, you you beautiful. I like that dress. You you gorgeous. You beautiful. Or you can switch it up and be like, damn, you so freaking gorgeous. You beautiful. Oh my god. Ne- ne- next thing you know, you got slob coming down your mouth and everything. <laughs> right, right. And I've been there. Up and down, <laughs> looking at, looking at her up and down like she's a piece of meat and like like she's so juicy and all that. Yeah. So. There are different degrees even to flirting and how far you push that. I guess really, realistically, gentlemen, the thing is, if your lady was acting the way that you were, and I'm using you just general, not you, uh, um, you know, pointing you out, but if, if your lady was doing the things that you were doing, would you be comfortable with in that behavior? That's the answer. Who that wants to take that? That's the answer. The, the question. That's the question. Who, that's who, the who question. Wants- yeah, I definitely got an answer for that. Okay, what's your answer, okay. bro? What's your answer, bro? I'm a different type of dude. I prefer a woman be brutally honest with me about everything because my preference is not to lie. Whether I'm right or wrong, I ain't going to lie. Like, when women say shit like this, oh, I, I wasn't looking at them. I don't think they're attractive. You're a human being. I'm not, yo, the, the woman that's with you is not going to view you as the only man on earth that's attractive. So to me, it's better that you just be honest about it. I can't be mad if you like, damn, he fine. I, I, you said that directly to me. So how am I going to be mad if that's how you feel? If mm, I see it honest. and I think she's fine, I, I might tap you like, look, God damn, like, look. Mm. You don't have no choice but to respect that. But if I, if you, say you on my arm, right? Your lady on your arm, you botting with her. And you cut your head while she talking to you on the left. You looking right, trying to see shorty ass. You dead wrong. To me, yeah, I think this, we dead wrong for that. This is I, the yep. But to to Griff's point, this is where communication comes in, and this is where in, in, in from the get go, from the beginning of when you meeting that person, you have to tell them, hey, this is what it is. I can be yep. a flirty type of person, right. Or, right. you know, I like this, or this is my lifestyle. If take you it or leave it. Game, if you came in a game with a bunch of chicks on your back, or she came in a game with a bunch of attention from dudes, and she's in this particular industry, or she do something specific that's going to warrant that type of attention, you got to be secure within yourself enough to be okay with that if this the person you want to sustain any yeah, sort yeah, of it's, it's, Yeah, it's up to you. It's your decision. Listen industry or not if she's bad she's bad regardless of what her job or title is if she's a gorgeous woman that's what it is she's going to get compliments regardless of where she's at or what she's doing or whatever you have to be comfortable with that same thing with the guy if the guy is a good looking guy the woman has to be comfortable in knowing that he's going to receive compliments and i think what it is guys it's about the delivery of how you say that because we can have conversation and we can admire. We look at people in Hollywood or just, as Sean said, in the industry, and you give compliments. You say, you know what, um, Angela Bassett is bad or Halle Berry is bad or any one of those women are bad. You say that mutually and I say that and the guy say, yep, yeah, she look good. She's fine. Or Jada Pickett Smith's mom. She's gorgeous. Yep. You know, so it's like you say it's content, <laughs> but if you if you being a wolf and be like, man, she's bad and you grabbing yourself or holding yourself and your lips is you got that's, water coming out the corner of your mouth that might good. be on the borderline a little bit disrespectful Thirsty. in the way that you're bringing the message but yeah. you know you got to set up that you got to have that understanding we are all human i mean that's what we're saying here on the on on this conversation and we have eyes that work and see Right. And so we should be able to express, hey, you know, he looked good. She looked good. And it not be a deal, you know, a deal breaker and not be a situation. I mean, because we're human. We're human. And, and when we're not with our spouse or with our mate or a person we're dating, the goal, we would hope we're going to get compliments. I would hope so. I hope that when I step out here, people that can see be like, you know what? That's a nice dress. She looks nice. Even down to the smell good. If you walk too close. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? She smells nice, man. Yeah. Like, man, what's that fragrance? So we got to keep it 100. Like, we have eyes and feelings. It's the way that you manage it. And if you're that person that you're going to flirt and push it to the left, push it to the limit, you got to keep in mind, strangers don't know that you're flirting or how far you're going. 
You, right. Maybe your intent is not to smash at all, but some of us are out here looking for that attention. So if you're flirting, that we're some people may say, "Where is this going?" You always flirt with me when you see me. You always say those things to me. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. These two things definitely tie into each other. Like this part of the conversation with flirting and Roland's um, point regarding cheating. To me, they both tie back into a sense of being direct. Like. You shouldn't have to worry about a person cheating if you're dealing with an honest person. Before they even reach the point of cheating, they're going to let you know where their emotions lie. They might just make you aware of the fact that I might potentially be interested in somebody else and I'm not sure why. That'll give you a fair opportunity to assess what you want to do with that information. Most people really don't have that sort of caliber about it. People will try to hide it or sugarcoat it or flirt, be slick, see what they can get off grid, that type of shit. I prefer a person just be direct. Like, them two things tied directly together. Okay, so I really want to get into why DJ Rollum <laughs> proposed this question, but before we get into that, the homie Mr. Moody is in the house. Yo! What up, man? What yeah. up, fam? What what up? Up, what's happening, cuz? Hey. Yo, what's happening, big dog? I like what you're saying, man. You sound like my twin, boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, keeping it, I'm keeping it a being. And for me personally, it's stemming from my character and me being in a relationship now for 21 years. Who's you your, make who's your, who, yeah. I'm sorry, Sean. Who's the queen on so I could greet the queen properly? Michelle Dawes Burke. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Michelle. Hey, queen. How are you? Hey, hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah man. Listen, um, that I was listening. I came in a little late. I'm sorry for that, y'all. I just got off the road, but... Uh, Hey, look, I, I tell everybody about the. I'm like the homie, man. I um, I don't really worry about cheating, and I prefer for a, a female to be drastically honest with me. Yeah. Notice yeah. I said drastically because I got low tolerance for nonsense. I don't like a lot of guesswork. Right. I like you to say what's on your mind. If I'm pleasing you, not pleasing you, if you, if somebody is attracted to you and you're looking at them in public with me, that really doesn't affect me because I'm going home with the prize. You looking at something like you looking at a car. You got, we got a nice car. Mm -hmm. You see it. Right. You got a Mercedes. Right. You see a dope Beamer. It's like, yo, that's nice. I'm not going right. to drive it. Like I'm, I'm not going to do that. But the biggest thing about me is that I don't, the reason I never worry about cheating and whatever. And I talk about it like all the time. Whenever I have group chats and whenever I'm on my show or whatever, I just cover my ass relationships. And when you cover your ass and do everything that you know you're supposed to be doing, you shouldn't, I'm not going to lose no sleep over anything. I know I'm right. doing every single base I'm supposed to cover as a man and a lover and a father. I've been married 25 years. I've been with a woman for 26. Everything I'm supposed to hold down and do as a man, I do it. I cover my ass because at the end of the day, marriages and relationships and everything, no matter how much, we, we don't like saying it, but they they business arrangements in a sense. And oh, just like I would do with anybody, I would contract paperwork anybody or have a spoken agreement with anybody. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to be doing financially, physically, emotionally. Yeah. And if you yeah. step out, you do what you're not supposed to be doing, I could throw my hands in the air and go, that's all you, because I did everything I'm supposed to do. Let me so ask I don't worry about cheating because I cover my ass all the Let time. Let me add something small to what you just said. At the yeah. end of the day, that's the perfect way to go about it because regardless mm -hmm. of what you say, think, or feel, a mm -hmm. person is going to do whatever they want to do anyway. Can't so control it. Knowing that you're going to do whatever you want to do anyway, I'm going to make sure mm -hmm. if our relationship or rapport goes awry, it's your fault. Yeah. It's my right. fault. Right. I'm gonna cover yeah. my I'm gonna cover my bases and men and women sure. do it because we get one directional a lot and men like to say women, women like to say men, but people the truth of the matter is both genders, you got people within both genders, they do everything they're supposed to be doing. That's why you see some people so upset when somebody betrays them because they put everything into it, right. whether it's a male yeah. or female. So for me, I'm not an angel. I look at cute women, but I'm not a gawker because I'm just not, I'm not a gawking kind of guy. So, That's so right. like my thing is if, if, if I see a, a cute female and I'm with my wife, I'm going to definitely look at her and I like tomboys. So just to let you know, the tight jeans hey. and the red bottoms and all that, that's going to turn me off. Actually, if, if you, if you walk by me 
in a, in a <laughs> pair of athletic shorts and a t-shirt and a baseball cap and you banging. I'm looking because my Chuck wife Taylor's be like, yo, on. Right. yeah, you got the With- chucks on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look at that, but at the at the end of the day, my wife, she feel she don't feel abused or anything. Cause at mm-hmm. the same time I'm looking at you, I probably got my hand on a booty cheek two seconds later while we walking, wow. kissing my wife on the neck. Yo, so I'm gonna take care of my business and just it's all right to look. We grown. At the same time, you reach a point as a man mm-hmm. where if you serious, you adamant about uh, sustaining a woman's well-being, mm-hmm. mentally, financially, your relationship, if you adamant about that, you reach a point as a man where you start to see anything outside of just a compliment as a trap. You look at that shit as yeah. a trap. As a man, yeah. you begin to witness, you know, if I do anything mm-hmm. to try to entice this woman, it's going to do two things. It's going to ruin what I already have, and I'm going to end up in a position I probably really didn't want to be in anyway. So what's the point? Right, right, right. Men yeah. still have to grow to that point, though, too. You know what I'm saying? Both men and yeah. women. But as men, yeah. if you're committed to something, if you're adamant about a woman's well-being, you'll start to see what's outside as traps anyway. Now, you're right. You're right, King. And it's, it, even if it's a trap by them or if it's, a, if it's an internal trap that we all have preset in ourselves to step mm-hmm. out, and do things because I'd, I'd be sitting up here stupid if I act like I don't talk to women or flirt with women or say anything with women like that. <laughs> but I don't do nothing that's really detrimental to my relationship. And if my, if I was with the kind of woman that had an issue with me looking or whatever, it's simple. that I got a real simple, simplistic way of looking at relationships uh, sometimes. And it's like, there are so many women out here, right, mm-hmm. that... I feel I got so many options in my life, in my world. I've always felt this way. I'm 51 years old. I felt this way since I was a youngin'. I don't have to deal with the with the drama queen. I don't have to deal with the the neck snapping. I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to right. deal with it at all. So right. I'm going to deal with somebody that see. I'm going to communicate. I think I heard Sean Garvey say it comes back to communication. I'm a straight from the door communicator. If we mm-hmm. meet for the first date. Don't ask me nothing you didn't want to. Right, right, right. That's the key it. to everything. Communication is the key, literally, to everything. Yeah, but I don't. I don't have to settle for nothing. None of y'all do. Yeah, yeah. So, so DJ Roland, why did you propose that question? Let's get into it. <laughs> wow, I didn't question. know all this was coming, but uh, <laughs> as, as a general you question, you opened the door, cuz. You and we went into 20, 20 some minutes into it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, this really goes to Michelle. Uh, the reason why I asked that question is because um, if you marry, or even even a relationship, doesn't have to be doesn't have to it doesn't matter the status or anything. And I found out I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but um, I know you heard about. Everybody here on this panel know heard about down low folks, right? The DL people, the huh? DL community. Oh, the yeah, DL yeah. Community. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. DL okay. community, okay. Now, um, someone I know has her husband uh, is cheating, but not with a, a dude, with himself. Whoa, what? wait a minute, turn, turn the beat down. Turn the beat down. Turn the I, had beat to stop down. I, I had to stop the beat. I had to turn stop the beat off. Yo! <laughs> turn it off. Turn the beat down. With himself. <laughs> oh, wait, left. Wait a minute. Your, your, wait your spouse, wait a minute. Your, your partner wait a minute. is cheating on himself. Right, Using Vaseline. Um, and, you know the, and you know the rest. <laughs> Is that really cheating or just self enjoyment? No, yeah, that's or just, question. Or just masturbating. That's just that's just masturbation. That's uh, just self uh, 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 How are you uh, uh. cheating on your? Okay. You're cheating on yourself. <laughs> if you got you're a high with... sex drive, uh, a high sex drive wife, and be careful how you work it, knowing sure that she wants right. to do it all the time. You cheating on yourself. 
or are you loving on yourself? You love on yourself, but then the marital. I understand exactly what he what he meant just now. You saying the wife has a high sex drive, right? And he busy focused on beating off. He ain't beating her. No. He's taking care of himself right. in the bathroom. Okay. Maybe he feels he can't satisfy her enough. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's she don't yeah. complain. She don't complain. She don't complain about him doing it? Wait, but she knows. No, she complain about what he she did don't... in the bathroom. She, she, she's, she's, she's getting pissed about that. that. Getting pissed about that, cheating on himself to, re to relieve his fulfillment in the bathroom. I gotta play. Oh, some, I gotta play some gun he shots. has a high sex drive. I gotta play some gunshots in the background, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I, I don't this, even know. Hey, I hey Roland, I think he, hey Roland, is, is is two things, man. My man, he, he, uh, well, it could be a couple of things. Uh. She expressed he's not necessarily attracted to her the way he used to be because it, it has to be something like that. Or he mm -hmm. has anxiety about trying to keep up with a high That's energy woman thinking. like that. Or mm -hmm. he's addicted. I don't like Matt. Hey, how, how old is the woman? How old is she? Mm, 47. And just okay. because she has a high sex drive, maybe she's not satisfying him. Yeah. Did we did we think about it that way? Just because you want to have sex all the time doesn't mean that you're satisfying your partner. Right. Okay. I, so it could Roland be. Said, it could be. It could uh, be the other way. So right. whoa, 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 wait a minute. Roland said the woman is forty seven. She's forty seven years of age. How mm -hmm. old yeah. is the guy? Fifty five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could be that. A little older. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm about to drop well, he, a bomb real quick. I'm about to drop a yeah. bomb. <laughs> drop, drop one before I drop. A, Come on, Sean let Garvey. Me, let me see. This, this ties in to what I want to touch on before we go into this morning's topic. Okay. Older women, listen. <laughs> it is summertime. Hot gal summer. Hot girl summer. The women are out. The young men are out. Where are my explosions? I'm just gonna have to do the guns right now. Uh, yeah. Uh, older women, women of um of an age, you need to start getting with us young dudes. And here's why well, I say that. I, I got. I got. I have to disagree with you there. I, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> just this. Just my perspective. Personally, I don't think it has anything to do with age. I think it has everything to do with chemistry. Mm. Yeah. And if you don't share yeah. chemistry with a person, you liable to do shit like what old boy doing. Yeah, maybe. If you don't mm -hmm. have chemistry, if she don't have chemistry with him, so as to not hurt his feelings, she could potentially just accept that behavior because she loves him. I think it had more to do with chemistry than age, man. That's just yeah, my I mean, I okay, okay, I, and I respect that, and I, I see that we're talking about sex, though. So, it's in the sex. grand scheme of things, when it comes to sex, and the older you get, certain things can and will change in the bedroom. Yo, but you can a person at an older age, and they make you feel young again. That yeah, that's you that's get where I would come in at an older age. <laughs> 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 This is where I will come in. <laughs> hey, hey, by, by the way, uh, nobody, <laughs> men or women, we don't want to. That's that thing when you, when you, when you learn turn. I, I, I think it was, I think it was the OG. He was saying he was married for twenty one years. You married for twenty one. Yo, listen, we don't always want to. Sometimes it's easier to lick shots in the air, man. Like I don't want to. I don't always want to be on top. Sometimes you don't always want to do that physical thing. Like sometimes, yo, the queen may she. I may not be home, and I may be on my way home. And it sometimes you don't want the sweat and the huffing and the puffing and the growl. You just want the easy. You want the quick thing. You want the quick thing. I but understand if, what you're saying, but me personally, I like the fuck. If, 
if you got an old woman, <laughs> no, no doubt. No, I'm still <laughs> listening. Yo, listen, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Period. 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 That's way, what I'm saying. Period. Listen, bro. Period. 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 When I was younger, I'm a young, I'm a young, I'm one of them, I'm one of them in shape, cardio ass. Young boy, no grade, fifty-one year old. So I got an engine on me, but to be I'm honest 41 with you, one with grade with an engine. <laughs> well, you just <laughs> distinguish. Well, that's distinguishment, but you—that's distinguishment. You know what I'm saying? But yo, it's like, like, it's like sometimes after you know, with twenty-five years of marriage, you also got to keep it spiced up too. Because when I was a yeah, bachelor, yeah. Yeah. I was sleeping with so many different people at one time. Like I always, some days I wake up crying now. I just get on my knees and look in the sky and say, thank you, Lord, for not right. giving me HIV. Because I don't know how I get it. Because mm -hmm. I was out there, I was out there wilding. And it's more, right. it's more exciting. It's funny. We traveling the world. We traveling through all these states and stuff. But when you pacing yourself long term in a relationship, I know my wife and I, we got a real healthy sex life. But I just know it's at certain times with her. She ain't mad at me or anything. Mm -hmm. She just kind of don't want me on top of her. She just kind of don't want that at the much. She just want something different. And I'm fine because I off is I'm not much of a masturbator, but let me tell you something. Go ahead and, and do the and do the beats. Do the beats by Dre's. Cause let me tell you, that's he better. Said, do the beats by Dre. <laughs> yeah, do the beats by Dre, son. That that's better than you going outside of the house and getting beat. Like with with my man's right there, he may have some kind of dysfunction mm -hmm. where his woman overpowers him or feel secure about something. Because I can't imagine somebody that got it, that's rocking out like that, that right. prefer to beat off all the time. Right, right. Say that she's probably a little aggressive and he ain't got no basis. Why are you going right next door to the bathroom? Damn, so you can't just do that right next door. No, but this, and, and to and to Roland, to Roland's point, uh -huh. Uh -huh. we he said, or according to the woman, she has a very high sex drive compared to the guy. So right. once again, going back to communication, there mm -hmm. needs to be some form of communication between the two, and the woman has to be transparent, and honest with them to yeah. get her on the same path. Yo, if you, if she, you, she wearing she wearing them out. The bathroom, she wearing them out. You constantly, if you go into the bathroom, you constantly beating off. Mm -hmm. You basically opening the door for for Garvey. You opening the door for Sean Garvey. Absolutely, this is facts. You this, is facts. <laughs> this is facts. This is facts. Yeah, you making it easy for him. I'm thirty seven. I'm 37. Man, Skin man, the game, baby. This, this, this <laughs> my old She's eleven years older, man. She. You turned 48, 48, 49 uh, uh, in, hey, in June. So hey, Roland, I don't know who your people is. I don't know nothing about him, but I'm gonna uh, take this back to him. If you're gonna keep beating off and you ain't gonna eat the box, you might as well expect the Garvey to show up eventually. You ain't <laughs> yeah. You said absolutely. Just, absolutely. just beat off yeah, and you know, leave her to the wind. Yo, tell him, tell him to stop. Tell me to stop beating off in the bathroom, though, because the bathroom is small. And like a guy that's that expertise on beating off, I would think that he'd be doggy stuff. He probably one of them guys that be in sexual positions while he beating off. Like, go, hey, 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 he ain't got a basement. Oh, go in the garage, <laughs> son. I'm out in the garage. Go somewhere you can have freedom and space to be. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> we want to beat freedom over here. We want to beat freedom. <laughs> Yeah, tell, tell you, she probably needs to tell him too. To, hey, stop looking at porn a lot because that can also be a yeah. contributor to yeah. him going yeah. to the bathroom or in places in the house where he's beating off and he's not being intimate with her. It, it could also mm -hmm. be an addiction from pornography because we hear stories right. about that also too. So, I mean, you never know, but hey, listen, best of luck to both of them. Absolutely. Like, right. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be no home wrecker or anything. I'm not trying to be no 2021 splack of belly, but I'm just saying. Hey, 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 Got hey, hey, roll them, roll them. Um, are they in the state of Georgia? Because, you know, Sean Garvey, you know, he just <laughs> wanted to go. <laughs> can, and I'm going to call with some so, words so, of encouragement. Sean Garvey, right. it, it got to be traveling. 
has to travel. I'm not saying what state, but as many states away, different time oh. zone, all that. Oh wow. Well. Well, yeah, man, I'm going to be too busy in, the, in here in the ATL to do all of that, man, you know. Well, you never know. She I mean, might see in this interview, Garvey, and seek you out. Hey, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. Anything is possible. Which transition, which goes, uh, segues into what happened to me over the weekend. Um, Got to just continue to say shouts to the older women out there, man. Um, loving you all. Mm-hmm. Loving you all. Damn, I, so, I thought that was a, I thought I was recording, Sean. I almost rang my damn. Bell. I swear to God, I was getting ready to ring. I got bell. you. I got you. I got you. I got you, Mr. Moody. I, got you. I was wait literally minute. getting ready wait to hit. My I got bell. you. I, I'm gonna ring the bell for you. Wait a minute. I can't. Oh, see, you get see, I got that bootleg bell. Mr. Moody got that bootleg <laughs> bell. Oh, but I got, God damn it. <laughs> Oh, he ain't no God. member of my that ain't no member of my bell family. But I just let you know I do got a bell. I'm trying to be like you, Mr. Moody, but I do got the applause though. I love it. I love it. Got I love that it. in the background. Yeah. Uh-huh. So let me fill you all in on what happened to me over the weekend. Okay, so uh, I mentioned earlier in the podcast that uh, I went to a festival that took place here in Powder Springs. And I met this woman, not at the festival, but on a dating app and you heard me share stories about me being on dating apps and my adventures with women that I have met on dating apps and what have you. But this one was different, conscious, into the same music as I, into art, into poetry, museums, all that great stuff. And she's attractive and she's older than me. Shouts Mm. to the older one. So, Uh, Making a long story short, I'm at the festival, just looking around. She texts me and asks me if I could send her a funnel cake. I'm like, "Um, okay. Uh, The 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 whole matter is uh, how you want to get the funnel cake. But she she's you know uh, insisted that I bring it over. I was like, okay, cool. Now I don't know her from a can of paint, so I'm taking a risk here. Uh-huh. I'm taking a dare. Like, I don't know this woman's last name. I don't know much about her, but she said to send her a funnel cake. And it's daylight. It's daylight. So something in me, my spirit told me to go ahead and do it, which I did. You know, she gave me the money to buy the funnel cake and what have you. I'm like, I'm not going to pay for a funnel cake for somebody that I don't know. Right. All right. Uh-huh. And on the way over there, she uh, also asked me if I wanted to stop buy and get some drinks and when she said drinks i don't mean high c or kool-aid right I'm, she mean drinks i'm like oh okay but I, I didn't get a chance to stop to get drinks uh because i was just like a few moments away from her apartment and i showed up to her apartment with the funnel cake no drinks in the hand ladies and gentlemen just a funnel cake a and funnel uh, she greeted me cake. funnel cake yeah Funnel cake, the plain funnel cake, to be more descriptive, Roland. No cherries, no strawberries, just a plain funnel cake with the powder on it. With the powder. With the powder. Just one funnel cake, one. <laughs> just one funnel cake. One funnel cake. One funnel cake. That's right. Yeah, man. Yeah. So she greeted me at the door. You know, we exchanged pleasantries and what have you. We sat down and talked. And uh, she said that, um, hey, let's go to the to the wine store. Let's go to the wine store, not far from where she lives. I was like, okay, cool. So we went, looked around at a collection of wine. Now, this wine place looked like the Office Depot version of a wine shop. Right. They got everything that you want. Everything. They got the, the light stuff. They got the heavy stuff. And we got the turn up, heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. She put me on to uh, Jack Daniels. So I got the Jack Daniels. I got the, uh, what is it, the whiskey? Yeah, I got the whiskey, the whiskey Mm -hmm. joint. So you never had Jack? You never had Jack before? I had Jack before. I I did have Jack before. Yeah, I had. So I got the Jack Daniels. Uh, I was about to get something else, but I ended up getting the Jack Daniels. I got the Jack Daniels and the Coke, the Coca-Cola. Got it, purchased it. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to get tipsy. I already know. 
I already felt it. I was going to get tipsy tonight. Not drunk, but tipsy. So we went back to her place. And she brought out two glasses. The big glasses. It's like, okay. I, and I kept telling myself, I'm not going to get drunk. I'm not going to get drunk. I'm going right. to be alert. I'm going to be stable. I'm not going to be like I was years ago. And I told DJ Rowland this story that happened years ago, but remember we'll get into I remember that. it. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> you called me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, the, it was in the middle of the night, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, um, so I, I, I ended up drinking the glass, thinking that I wasn't going to get drunk. Mm. All of a sudden, I was like, whoa, my vision was out of whack. Mm. I started laughing a lot. Me and homegirl, you know, we was kicking it, we was vibing. And I was like, oh, shit. Am I tipsy or am I drunk? Mm. Right? And guess what happened? I got to stop the beat for this. I find myself walking in and out of her apartment, yo. Whoa. Huh? In and outside the door of the other apartment. Outside. You mean yeah. you, you walk in and out? Excuse me, sir. You, you were drunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were drunk. That, uh, and that was the, yeah. And it mm. confirmed it. It confirmed it. I was drunk, ladies and gentlemen. I was drunk. Mm. I was impaired. Right. Right. I'm thinking, okay, I'm drunk, but I'm not going to throw up. I'm not going to throw up. I just now. need some fresh air. I just not need now. some fresh air. You can't, you can't mm -hmm. do that. Yep. Not, not now. Next thing I knew, I was like, mm -hmm. no, you didn't. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I started you let it go. Up. You, let, you let it go? I let it go. I let it go outside, outside of my car. Thank God. And it wasn't the first time. This happened three or four times. Mm. Three times that one night and the fourth time after I left her place. You so said you, stayed, you, yeah. you puked three times that night? Three times that night, yeah. True story. So there, so there was no, there, there was no intercourse involved here. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about, I'm about to say she nasty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I don't kiss and tell. I don't kiss and tell on this show, man. Hell. I don't kiss and tell. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to homegirl. We just, we just spent more time. We spent time. That's like, that's what I could say. That's the the political answer. That yeah, we me and uh we we spent some time in my Barack Obama voice. Yeah, uh, me and uh Barack. this young lady. We, uh, we we spent some time. How did sound like day. she got a? She sound like she got a throw up fetish or something, man. <laughs> I, I mean, we all been there. We all threw up no, no, at some point in time. Griffey, you great. One time for me, one time for me, many years ago, and I didn't like that feeling. So I ain't ever go mm. through that no more. Right. I think the last. I think the last time I threw up off liquor was uh, nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety. He was ninety six. I was twenty years old. Mm. Twenty one here. I think the Giants won the Super Bowl or something like that, and we was just. We we was in NY, we was wilding. And whatever whatever year it was, it was the one of the early 90s Giants Super Bowls. And we yeah, that was 90. Yeah, that was 90. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. Was, I was going we for was, them too. They brung, they brung like all this moonshine down. Ooh. We were drinking Hennessy and moonshine and wow. Budweiser. So that that's make the you throw up anyway, all that. I'm a drink pro, as y'all know. I'm a drink pro. Like I don't, I don't drink hard liquor no more anyway. But I drink beer. I, I think I might get a little buzz, but I don't. I don't get. I, I don't think I've gotten drunk in uh, at least five days. Yeah, 
Drunk? Have you ever been drunk or wasted or tipsy? Or- yeah, a long time ago. And I have to agree, I didn't like that feeling. So I just uh-huh. make sure that I drink to, you know, to enjoy it, but not to get where I'm throwing up. I don't like that feeling. No. Uh, yeah, no. I gotta attest and to it, this. And, and, oh, and ahead, as a woman being and as a woman being out, I try to be careful anyway, you know. So right. I right. typically, you know, I drive, so I want to make sure I get home safe. And I, you yeah. know, so I want to be conscious of what's happening around me. So I'm mm-hmm. definitely, you know, I definitely don't do it like that. I think if you do, I think you should be in a safe place, definitely. And then right. you can let your hair down. But I don't like that going up feeling. No, it's nice yeah. going down, drinking. Oh, it's real good. Oh, this is so good. It, oh, I'm not drunk. And then you'd be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like no, nah, I, I, I take it easy. Yeah, sneaks up you. Or them, the liquors that sneak up on you, you really got to be careful. Uh, and, you know, dark. You know, dark liquors. You know what you're dealing with. As soon as you open up your mouth, you know what you're dealing with. But the sweetie uh, drinks or mixed drinks, you you know, you think you handling throwing it back like it's juice. <laughs> yeah, and then it catches up with you. <laughs> I got. I gotta say this. I gotta say this. I got drunk and uh-huh. had a one night stand all in the same night. Ooh. Was that a good night? That was a good night for you. Uh, that's the plan. Yeah, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. What? I mean, it was a trip on what happened. I mean, I'm not gonna get in too much detail. All I know is that that type of drink you saying the sweet ones that that just sneak mm-hmm. up on you. I, you know how mm-hmm. they had the um the mixed bottles. Mixed uh, alcoholic bottles, um, yeah. not like the uh, wine coolers or anything, but those bottles. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. mixing them together. Wow! Oh, yeah, I was doing that, and I had about yeah. twelve solo cup drinks like that within uh, probably a three hour span. You was lit, cause you yeah, was <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's trying, he's trying to prove a point. I, yeah, to prove I said, I told myself, I'm getting drunk tonight. I already. Okay. My purpose in my head at that time at 21, I said, I'm going to get drunk tonight. Right. But uh, at the same time, my um, sexual thing we kept going higher and higher. And mm. I'm like, oh, boy, who's going to be the victim? <laughs> who, who's going to be the, the, the Do you want to use that word victim in 2021? Well, that was 1996, okay? <laughs> All I can remember is this. The dude was about to do this girl. And <clears throat> I asked the dude, do you mind if I stay in here? Because I want to watch. Wow. And nice. So nice. I sat there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got a little erection and whatnot. And he, he like, and she was like on the ground. And he came out the bathroom. He didn't say nothing. He just looked at me and like and left. And close the door. It wasn't that same guy that you told that you was talking about earlier in the podcast. Nah, I don't know this dude. <laughs> okay, we're just trying to put two she and two together. The ground, you know? She was on the ground. With, what you mean she was on the ground? We were on the on the floor in in the bedroom. Oh, okay. You are on the on the floor where you are like in the Indian style. Nah, I mean, I was what? laying, I was sitting against the wall or something. She was Going laying down. Further, further left. <laughs> yeah. I was rubbing hey, roll, on roll her. She, she roll them. You responded. Said, you said ground. I was like, I said, yo, my yeah, dude was in the alley. It was a house party. It was a house party. It was a house party. And oh, no doubt. Yeah. It was a house and party with no kid in play. No kid and play, no. But there <laughs> were some kids that were playing, though, for nah, real. Nah, nah, for nah, real. nah, nah, nah. We all young. Probably the oldest one was there for 24. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. I ain't gonna Sean hurt Barbie. nobody. Sean yep. Barbie, can I, I want to say something about older women when Rollem is done, because there's something special about older women, though. And, and yeah. 
and drunk. Yeah, when yeah, go ahead, Roller. La, la, All, la, right. la, la, All la. I know is that I was rubbing on her. Oh shit. He didn't stop. <laughs> but here's the bad part. So of course I did what I did. She thought I was the other dude. No. Yeah. Cause remember the other dude in was you, in the room with you, her when yeah, I came in. Gone. Yeah, huh? but did you slide in? You slide in as him? Did you slide in her as him? Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I gotta ask this now, question. She was drunker than me. She was drunker than me. Wow. Oh. Okay, so I gotta ask this question moving forward, DJ Ballin. Should we be worried? Yeah. <laughs> Should we be worried? <laughs> yep. 30 years later. Was that consensual? What do you mean? That doesn't that doesn't seem consensual. Yeah, mm -hmm. like look, well, that, that, I, this, the the act was already I, over. I, 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 what? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You did it. You did it. You didn't realize she knew you was the other dude until it was over. Right. Okay. Okay, to see that? I got that. Because she didn't resist. Well, she, I didn't she thought it was him. Afterwards. Okay, so let's talk. All right. What about the day after or two days after? Did she realize what happened? Did, did you all still talk or nope. what was the outcome? We, after never, we never talked since then. Yo, no. I, I feel I, I I feel some type of way about that, mm. but you know, to each their own, I guess. No, it is, but but y'all gotta understand. Like, no, I totally understand that too. But the whole thing is, all of them drunk, you drunk. All of them don't know that she doesn't understand that's him. They don't know that. Okay. He just gotta. He just got somebody participating with him. And so Roland does something, then it's all said and done. And then there's a moment of clarity. And she's like, wait a minute, you're not dude. And Roland was like, no, I'm not. Like, did you think I was dude? It sounds like he's saying at no point in time did she even, he just thought he was a willing participant. We've kind of been in stuff like, we've kind of been in stuff like that. But like for me, with drunk women, and I think I think was I think his maybe a little bit of difference. I'm not bragging about it because it's not a good thing, but I've been drinking since I was 16. Mm -hmm. So by the time, and I've been traveling all over the place, fighting and playing basketball, all and doing music from 1986. So by the time I was 17 or 18, the one thing that I understood is that. If you want to repel me like garlic from a vampire, a drunk woman in front of my face. I don't give it. Yo, let me tell you something. I could be the horniest dude in the world. I could be whatever, whatever. I don't deal with drunk women. They my wife. And let me tell you why. Because at any point in time, they can wake up off of something I didn't think. Like, I, I want y'all to think where Roland is coming from. Roland, Roland is like, Yo, we in those days, my man's is in there with a chick. I come in, she see me. Yo, he break out. Me, getting it on and all that. And then afterwards, is she get this clarity like I thought. Would Roland have done that if she had said, wait a minute, you're not someone, so you shouldn't be in here. Right. I'm sure he, you know what I'm saying? So not making right. excuses, but I, I think that's what Roland is saying. So like the one thing I learned, we were in L.A. one time. We had a bunch of dancers from a video. We was we was down in West Hollywood. No, we was down in we was down on Sunset Boulevard, and they was in the hotel. And we had just done this video shoot. This was years ago, a, a long time ago. And we right. we um we tossed it up. So we tossed it up, but we had to go to the studio after that. And we was like, "Yo, we leaving." doing what we do it's like you got like 11 of us and you got like seven of them and we got adjoining rooms and and we getting it in and people are drunk and people are high so we do what we do well one of the chicks was like yo i'm an artist too i want to roll with y'all we was like nah i don't really work like that like we like we did what we did and we out 
Right. She's like, yo, so y'all gonna F me and y'all just gonna bounce? We was like, yeah, I mean, this is at least what we thought we was gonna do. It's kind of like what we thought the agreement was gonna be. So what she did, her friends that was with her, they was like, why are you bugging? Because that's, we know what time it is. Like, we leaving. We out of here. These guys got to go to the lab. Anyway, she left. We up in the room. We are we are drunk high. We got guns. We got weed. It's way back in my day. We got all that in California. And somebody's beating the door down. We open it up as LAPD. Shorty went downstairs, called the cops, and said we raped her. Right, right. I like a Tupac Nobody thing. Raped her. Nobody right. came close to raping her, dude. She was she was voluntarily walking back and forth. Like, yeah. Super duper voluntary. Uh-huh. She spent a whole day clearing that up. Spent the whole day. They was telling us we not leaving Cali. They was so so I get it with that drunk stuff. I learned, I think, when I was like, I probably was like about 20, maybe. And I was like, yo, the thing about a drunk woman or man, because you got to remember. You, when somebody don't have they, they mindset with them, mm-hmm. a situation like Roland, I kind of get, if, if a woman saw me walk in a room with my mans in it, and she like all cool and chilling, and I'm drunk and may not understand that she's drunk like I'm drunk. Many of us, I don't want nobody to put their stuff out there, but how many of us have, you know, had some side-by-sides on what they call trains and things like that? You don't really know, but Rolling what I thought initially till I figured it out quickly that you knew she didn't know. Figured that out quick. That wasn't what you were saying, but if you were saying that, I was about to do one of them. Hey, guys, I gotta go. My phone ringing. Out of here. <laughs> right. That's not, that's not what he was saying, though. He was like, she's not, he thought she was down with the program. Then they done, and she's like, oh, shit. I didn't know that wasn't him. Cause Roland, was she mad? Nope. You know what I'm saying, like, it's I okay. That's that I said. get. Nope. <laughs> he said it very casually. Right. Like, I know. Nope. Just, nope. <laughs> she wasn't mad because she knew she was like, oh, oh, dear. But Sean, last about the drunk. The last time I was super duper drunk out of my mind that I could think. Yeah. We was on. We was. We was in Cali again with Pendulum Records. And this is the night I actually met my wife in a way that you would think we would wild people like us would meet somebody she came there with a friend of hers who's a copywriter she cleared a lot of samples at that back in the day okay she came there and she came to get a little sister autographs from the group and so what we were doing when they walked in the door we were on the ninth floor to make a drink called head crushers and so what a head crusher was is you would get a you would get a forty ounce, you would guzzle half of the forty, and then you would put Hennessy Crown Jack fifty one. You put everything in that, close it up, shake it up, and you put them on the counter. But you keep drinking and smoking the whole time. And mm-hmm. then when you drink the four, when you drink the concoction, it, we call that a head crusher. So. When my wife, who I didn't know would be my wife, because she was in there looking like a bum because she came for her sister to get an autograph, but she didn't want to be bothered. So she was literally just like a homeless person. Uh, when they walked mm-hmm. in the room, it was three of us on the ninth floor, the balcony, the crunches with our legs looped around the column, the balcony. So we was nine floors up, three crunches. Mm. Hi, or get out. Could have fell, could have died, could have did whatever. That's the last time I remember being full bar, and I haven't ever been full bar since then. Wow. Damn. Hey, Man, yeah, this before it slipped my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I have been intoxicated to the point where I earl before, but never where mm. a chick was involved. That's what I was mm. trying to say early. Mm. I mm. definitely puked Got off you. some liquor before. But not well, as cool. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, would it be fair to say, and we're going to go into our topic. So would it be fair to say that the older woman that I was involved with over the weekend, maybe it was her way of trying to get me drunk. 
And that's why I was asking you how you felt about it afterwards. How'd you feel I about great. it? Hey. I felt great. I just didn't like the <laughs> oh, fact yeah, that, awesome. that <laughs> I just didn't like the fact that oh, boy, they up. felt great. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Now. You all know why I said I felt worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I can't I can't do it anymore. That's why I want to try to stay off the hard liquor or just the liquor period for a while. Because right. I just I, that throwing up thing and the hangover and stuff like that, that is ah, I, I just don't like that. I like being tipsy. I don't like being drunk. But I, I, you know, I have to watch my limit, and sometimes I will make a mistake and slip up and say, "Oh, let me get another one. Let me get another one. Let me get another one." Like, no, 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 no. You didn't figure out your limit because, yet after all these years. I know, man. Because that, because yeah, then you know, because this is so crazy. You know, you get last last year while we were recording the Beat Break Morning Show at Wayward Studios. Right. I was high. I wasn't drunk. I was high, and I threw up. You threw up off the car. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't throw up in. I didn't throw up in front. I didn't throw up in the studio. I, I did the same thing that I did over the weekend. I went outside and I threw up. Yeah. Wait, wait. You threw up. You threw up off the smokes. I threw up off the gummies. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, remember, I remember that. I remember that. that. Yeah, I remember that. that and we played it off very good too. <laughs> we played it off very good. You was there that day, uh, rolling. That yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember what that. The wrong with, what the hell is wrong with Garvey? What's, what's going on? I said he doesn't know his limit yet. I'm like, after all these years, <laughs> even after he called me when he was totally drunk and and about to do the girl and whatnot. I'm well, like, no, I, I did that. I, I did that. But even after that, I threw up. So right. it's like in certain scenarios where I'm where I'm in. I have a tendency to go above the limit and afterwards I throw up. So I'm learning my limit as I go along. I'm well, always going to be Garvey. taking to learn the limit. Hey, Garvey, hmm. while you sipping, are you sipping until you catch a buzz or are you waiting? You know, you're taking, you pacing yourself on your glasses, you know, so that it catch up with you, not you trying to catch the yeah. buzz. Right. So what, what I'm doing? basically doing is it's like I will sip and taste and I'd be like, OK, I, I know that if I keep drinking and drinking and drinking, it's going to affect me to the point where I'm going to get drunk. So I have this habit of when I'm socializing with people, I, I, you know, when I drink, I socialize. Right. So I'm a social drinker. Right. But I have this habit where I keep drinking, I, I keep drinking while I'm talking or while I'm engaging with that person. You know what I mean? It's like a habit. It's like, not like, okay, let me take two sips, put it down, and then I stop. It's like, I keep drinking. So you find a comfort in a conversation with a glass in your hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a force of habit. That's and a I'm force not getting, yeah, that's a force of habit, but I'm learning as I go alone so i gotta be in that disciplined mindset to tell myself only two only two sean and that's it mm -hmm. i gotta keep telling myself that so in the meantime depends the meantime, on what two it is right depends yeah. on what two it is yeah right that part you you drink you drink beer or you only drink hard liquor i drink liquor i don't really you know i i, I drink some beer but I, I i you know beer i'm not really too much of a fan I'm I'm more of a fan of wine. I'm a mm -hmm. wine connoisseur. I heard Michelle. She's like, mm. <laughs> after yeah, 1996, I was, I was, I was, that, was, that wasn't me. That was drunk. somebody. That wasn't me. That was somebody else that gave you the hmm. Oh, that wasn't me. I would tell you. I mean, <laughs> all I gotta say is this: I, after being drunk one time back in '96, I know my limitations because I get to it. And then I enhance it by smoking, inhaling blacks. So I already you know got, my limitations. You got, you got to get them up, cuz. You got to no, get no, them up. No, no, I don't do it like that. I'm just saying, that's how I used to be. Right. You know, I used to yeah. inhale, last time I inhaled about four or five blacks, 
and and I drank about three or four 20 ounces. Was on my on my homeboy's um, bachelor night. That was mm-hmm. the last time. I was I think that was 2010. Yeah, mm-hmm. 11 That's years ago. You, that's how you catch that balance, though. When you don't want to over drink, you'll you'll burn a black and mild or a new pour or some shit like that to balance it out. Mm-hmm. Well, I felt good. That's all mm-hmm. I gotta say. I was good. So I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got that part in so long. So I'm I'm good. So I already know what my limitations yeah. are. Right. Yeah, man. Well, I, I, I want to give a shout out to all the cougars that have taken advantage of me yes. when I was underage. And, and uh, <laughs> I want to I want to say to you all that not only did they teach me how to have sex, but, you know, Sean Garvey, the cougars taught me how to drink because I was a wild, a wild dude. And what I, I never forget the fr- when I was so when I was 17, I slept with a 36 year old woman. That was the at that time, it was the oldest woman I ever slept with. but. I was a I was a different 17 year old because I had my own place. I was I was earning my own money and stuff like that. And so but she was 36 and we went out one night. We went to a bar. I didn't have to show ID in the bar because it was Brooklyn and I'm and I'm Brooklyn. Everybody, I am Brooklyn. And so we would just go in there and we would drinking and she was like, you got to slow down and because I, I was just guzzling I think it was crap whatever it was drinker. like right now like I told y'all I don't I've never been much of a smoke I did smoke weed here and there never been a cigar guy never been a cigarette guy I smoked one cigarette when I was locked up I was about to get beat up in the cell because I smoked the cigarette and it almost killed me and everybody was like yo he's a chump Yo, he can't smoke a cigarette. I one toke and I almost died. So it was one one toke of a cigarette. Never really been a cigar smoker. Did smoke a little weed back in the day. I always been a drinker. I cut the alcohol out in 20, the hard liquor, I should say. I cut that out in like 2015 or 16. But my thing has always been like with older women, I'm sitting there when I was tossing them down as a youngin. She was like, yo, you got to slow down. I was like, Slow down what? She says, because you slurring. And I was like, slur, what you mean? Because when you're drunk, you don't really think you're doing any of that. Right. Recognize yeah. the things that you're doing. So I'm kind of like, so she was like, yeah, you got to, and we want to go home and we want to relax and we want to da 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 da. You got to measure yourself. You're trying to, you're trying mm-hmm. to get drunk or you're trying to get nice. I was like, man, I never, I guess I ain't think about that. And so we, I learned from the Cougars. The, the the best thing about Cougars, salute to all my Cougars out there that be that be banging young boys that are of legal age. Because y'all are the women that grow America. Salute. Salute, salute you. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna salute my Cougars. If you if you do it 18 and over, you are growing the men of America and we honor you. All right. <laughs> well, damn, I guess I ought to honor that. That 32 year old when I was 19, I'm like, okay. I mean, hey. Hell yeah. Why not? Did she teach you? Did she teach you something? Uh how to have better sex. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I hey, the first the first, hey, look. I had a woman that was well with 20 years older than me. I was on that 17. Just because I said I was independent don't mean I still wasn't a kid, you know. It's right. like when I look back in retrospect. I lost my virginity at 13. And like when a lot of people are like, yo, I lost that to a 16 year old. So with a lot of people are like, yo, yo, that's the bomb, that's the bomb. And I always tell people, if I could take my life back, to be quite honest with you, I had sex so young. 13 year old kids, supposed to be playing basketball or something, dog. Seriously, you're supposed to be having crushes and stuff like that. But all of that is in retrospect as a grown man. I know that I slept with the woman that was 20 years older than me. It started off like I was a G. It started off like I was a G because she came to my crib. She's like, that's your own crib? Yo, hey, yo, y'all, I had a black time. Now, I don't know who on here is older than me because I'm 51. (laughs) But in case y'all don't know, young boy place. He 
Titan-sized futon. G-O-D. That's big time. Dogs. I can't. I, can't. I had a I had a futon and I had one of them big eight thousand pound big screen TVs that they needed a crane to bring into your house back in the day. Oh, and so yeah, so we doing we get into sex and I'm 17. I'm 17. No matter no matter how mature I think I am, I'm 17. And I've been mm-hmm. dealing with 18 year olds, 19 year olds, 21. She's from a different planet. Her ambiance is different. Her mentality with mm-hmm. sex is different. It, it's whatever. And so I'm I'm doing this. And you know what she did? Grab both of my hips and say, hey. I was like, oh, she was like, you're not trying to kill it. I don't want to die. Like, slow down. And she's giving me like this lecture. She was like, you want to make, because I got an orgasm. She's actually educating me on the scene. So she was right, like, yeah, right. so, so she, she was like, yo, you, so you hear what I'm saying, right? I said, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, so you got it? I said, yeah, I think I got it. She said, so show me what you just learned. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Same thing. I'll figure that out tomorrow, whatever. And but over the course of time, taught me how to slow down, foreplay, light bulbs. I'm from that red light bulb era, man. I'm from there. I'm so, really interested in hearing the female's perspective on everything that's been said thus far. Michelle, I'm, freaking, I'm Michelle interested. Like, in let's it. get into this topic. <laughs> this, this is this is a locker room conversation. I don't know where I could. You know, add any kind of value, but um, I, Michelle, I, I don't know how we got to this point. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to know how long you guys had dated or saw each other once you learned the magic and how to slow down and that. Did you guys see each other much longer after that, Jeff? Mr. Moody? Um, for the summer, it was like she's older, so she's manipulating. By the, by the way, my queen, women got locker rooms too. You know they y'all got like a room. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, so, yeah. so, so, what I would say is that for her, as that's when I learned about manipulation and just being wise. You know, like with dating. You know, it's also, it's also when I learned not not to be. Um, to answer your question directly, in her mind, it was already already had a blueprint for that. It's like I'm with young boy. Seeing an older dude, but I'm with young boy right now, and wherever it go, I'll direct it because right now I'm just looking at him as a the young energetic guy that I come through, and he he did, never gets tired and whatever whatever. So we saw each other for like half of a summer. Uh, we saw each other sporadically, and then the next summer, when I was 18, I had a tremendous uh, mental growth from 17 to 18, maturity growth like a ridiculous one and so we bumped into each other again and we kind of rocked out for the whole summer but but um one thing I'll say is that that did teach me about because she did a little more than just the sex thing Mm -hmm. she was like schooling me just on everything like yo you calling a woman come over your house and you sleep with her and you you tell her it's time to leave but how does that make you a real one though like yo don't don't put the time in if you're going to treat people like they're disposable, you got to chill because I don't want to come over your house and have a good time and be forced to leave. It just mm-hmm. taught me a lot of maturity. The reason that I say mm-hmm. I do respect cougars, even though a lot of it is in, in jest. Anytime that you can get somebody, woman or man, whether it's sexually or in life in itself, anytime somebody could, could make you slow down and peep scene, understand game and see life for what it is you're a 17 year old kid sex to me got a mean it's an orgasm it's like it's for the most part that's what sex is because i'm 17 man i want to do what i do and i still want to go meet the guys and play basketball later and i wasn't i wasn't really into sacrificing the time past what i was interested in you, you, if that makes any sense, like I'm, I'm like, yo, 
if you over here from eight to nine, I should be playing ball with the fellas by nine thirty. But I didn't understand <laughs> that you just gotta pri- you gotta prioritize. Like right. you gotta treat you gotta treat people fair. You gotta treat people with respect. And that's probably why I never had a serious fallout with many women is because I treat everybody really well. And when things dissolve, they always dissolve in a real cool fashion. Cause I'm just, I'm, I'm adverse to like drama and I don't like people to be hurt when they walk away from me or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. So to answer mm-hmm. your question, we did, it was kind of off and on, but I grew up a lot. Cause I, I will admit at 17 years old, I was a, I was an idiot. I was a true idiot. Literally. I take on that for multiple reasons, man. But mm-hmm. well, to not drag this conversation out, mm-hmm. my take is a little different because I learned at eight with a 24-year-old. Oh, you got raped like I did. You got raped earlier. With, mm-hmm. with a woman 24. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So my take a little different when it kind of older men, younger women, older women, younger men, my take a little different. Mm-hmm. Even though I get where yeah. you're coming from, no, you know, no doubt, it's, it's, it's different avenues yeah. to the way that situations like that pan out. Yeah. But that's a whole other conversation, a whole another podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, yeah. Hey, you got a, 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 King. I'm gonna send you an invite. You got, you got to come on my show for one of the it's sidebar so discussion, man. Yeah, for sure, definitely yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and mm-hmm. just to to add to that, mm-hmm. I had my first kid. 15 to 16, my second 16 to 17. And both oh. of these women were older than me. Ah. They both were 20s, 30s. Mm. You know what I mean? So my yeah. take is definitely different. That's a whole nother combo. That's gotcha. a big yeah. that yeah. we didn't really don't like to get into. Facts, facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. All right. It's the Beat Break Morning Show, the Beat Break Podcast. You rocking with the best right here on WBS 87 FM Atlanta. Sean Garvey, DJ Rollum, the Griff Man, Mr. Moody, and Michelle Dawes Burt is in the house. Stay tuned in a little while. Michelle Dawes Burt got the news update at the top of the hour, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, DJ Rollum is going to be on the ones and twos for the caffeine and energy drink mix later on on the morning show. Right here on BeatBreakRadioFM.com, as well as on ThinkingOutLoudNetwork.com and on the Podcast FM app, all right? Uh, so, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next topic. Of course, everybody has been talking about it, and everybody has been uh, experiencing somewhat of a crisis. Uh, if you are a daily commuter, the gas shortage in most of the East Coast areas also affecting the state of Georgia. And combine that with the vaccination. Um, that's, of course, uh, more and more people are getting vaccinated by the day. Companies and celebrities and, you know, just everybody, almost everybody is advocating people to get vaccinated so that we can be at 100% of people getting vaccinated. Some people feel a certain type of way. Like I said earlier, uh, a few days ago, President Joe Biden made a unprecedented speech to millions and millions of Americans and, of course, around the world that um, people can now go into stores and restaurants, establishments. If they are vaccinated, they do not have to wear a mask. But for those that have not been vaccinated, have to continue wearing a mask. Some people feel some type of way about that. Others feel like, well, hey, I'm vaccinated, so I'm good. Now, Mr. Moody, of course, he does the Jeffers Moody Show 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. with DJ Naturell on our platform, Beat Break 87 FM, Reach One Network. A strong advocator when it comes to getting the vaccine, of course, DJ Rollum and Mr. Moody are vaccinated with the exception of myself, yours truly, Sean Garvey, and the Griff Man. Now, Michelle, let's go over to you, Michelle. Are you fully vaccinated? Yes. You are fully vaccinated. Yes, yes okay. I am. Yes, I okay. am. And I did it And I did it because a uh, couple of reasons. I first waited to see um, how things were turning out. And, you know, initially everything was for the first responders, right, really, or people with high risk and that type of thing. 
And by the time they relaxed the, the, the requirements, you know, I had thought about it. Um, my mother is in her late seventies. I want to see my mom uh, up Amen. in New York. She, you know, and she got the vaccine and her, her twin sister, my aunt, so they got it. So I want to be able to be around them. That was one thing. Um, this past year, uh, my son was been, has been able to be home, right? Virtual learning at home. Well, when they open up the schools in August, I, I, I don't know what he's going to be exposed to, what he's going to bring home to me. So that was the second condition or reason why I said, let me get the vaccine. And third, I like to travel, international travel. And so I didn't want to uh, travel somewhere and come back and have to be quarantined or detained. Listen, I just want to show you my vaccine, my vaccination card and keep it pushing. Like, but I don't tell people, like, I don't think it's something you wear on a badge for me. Like, I don't need to tell you that's. I think it's a personal thing. It's a personal choice. That's like asking if you've been tested for HIV or not. Same thing. It's personal. Um, whether or not you've gotten the vaccine or not. Everybody has their reasons. There's a lot of people that are practicing holistic remedies and medicine and, mm -hmm. and the way that they eat, the disciplines that they have with the food types of food, and they feel that that regimen is going to keep them safe from even catching COVID. Or if they do, they feel mm -hmm. like they have a higher tolerance or immune system to to ward off the symptoms so right. there's a lot of people that are in that space that are not going to get the vaccine so i think we're we're definitely divided people have their different reasons um you know as to why they will or will not get it but i'm fully vaccinated okay nicely go next so me uh let's let's go over to griff man let's go over to the griff man and find out why he has not gotten vaccinated. And then we'll go to Mr. Moody and then we'll go to myself. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what oh shit means when it comes from uh, the Griffin Man. Hey, listen, listen, listen. I'm going to give you all the disclaimer first, right? Okay. I do not lie. I don't pull no punches. I'm straight to the point. Some people understand it and embrace that. Some people really don't like that. They take it like, you know, I might have an attitude or something. It's not that at all. My yeah, truth, is not, I don't try to persuade other people to share the same perspective as me because I fully understand that my truth is mine. Theirs is theirs. The person that says that they're right and the person that says that they're wrong, they're both usually right. The person says that they can, the person that says that they can't, they're both usually right. For me personally, I just don't see, I don't find validation at this point for me to inject myself with something that the FDA didn't even condone at this point. You know, so for me, I feel like a test dummy. Me and my family have taken the necessary precautions to make sure that we stay safe thus far. We've been successful at that. I don't knock anybody who chooses to get the shot. My mother got the shot, other relatives have the shot. But for me, now just ain't the time. It's not that I'm against it, I'm just not for it for me. If that makes sense. Okay. Yep. It makes Fair perfect enough. sense. It's too many Fair risks. Enough. I didn't see too many people pass from it thus far. I got relatives that's incarcerated, you know, caught COVID. And because of simple things like their workout regimen in prison, they beat COVID when their cellies were dying. So, you know, right. my take is, is not going to be the equivalent of everybody else's. I'm not against people who decide to get the shot. Um, mm -hmm. I salute that. I just feel like at this point, for me, it's a no. You know, it's a, it's okay. a negative for me at this point. Absolutely. Uh, now, Mr. Moody, I want to go over to you next because you talked about it a lot on your afternoon show, the Jeff is Moody show, and you had some strong, strong perspectives towards oh, people. Oh, who... Yeah, my, my bad. I'm going to cut you off, but let me say this thing before it slipped my mind. Another level of understanding for me is if you get the, if you get the vaccination and you can still get COVID, after getting vaccinated, what's the point of the shot? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's find out from Mr. Moody himself. Mr. Moody, go ahead. Okay. So, so um, in line with, with what everybody is saying off and on, because I'm a straight shooter too. I don't really know any other way. Right. Um, I don't have a problem with people that don't get the vaccine. If you listen to what I say, 
if you listen to me talk a lot, it's um, anybody that doesn't trust this government, I I never trip on that. Right. I'm not tripping. That's like I understand why people wouldn't run out and they would go get they wouldn't go get an injection in their arm. Now the I will say this: the FDA the FDA approved. There's a difference between FDA approved and FDA clear. So that's maybe mm -hmm. that's something we can talk about a little later on. But here's what I'll say about the vaccine. I don't trip. Be a fool. Trip. Somebody that looks me in the face and go, yo, dog, don't trust it. Don't trust them. Ain't doing it. And I'm like, that. My issue with people doesn't come with the vaccine. My issue with people comes from the selfishness and the ignorance of not understanding that we have a global pandemic, that whether you want to acknowledge it or not, over a half a million people have died from it. My biggest issue where I start wilding on people, it's the mask. It's not the yeah. vaccine. Yeah. Because yeah. The, the, the thing about the mask is we give each other a fighting chance. If we... All of these diseases that they introduce to us, whether they're man-made or whether they're accidental or whatever the case may be, we have to understand we live for a fighting chance. Like mm -hmm. there's, there's nobody that gets up in the morning. None of us will get up tomorrow and go for a fighting chance. There's nothing guaranteed. Because if you had everything guaranteed to you, you wouldn't be worried about a no. damn thing in your life. No matter where you're going tomorrow to prosper, or earn, or doing whatever, get hit by a bus, car flip over, whatever the hell, catch a heart attack, catch a stroke, anything can happen. Here's what I'll say about the vaccine on my end. I am a person that does not like vaccines. I have never had a flu shot one day in my life. I don't like people putting stuff in my arm. I don't even like tetanus shots. I don't like none of that. I looked at I detach my emotion from my reality. Mm -hmm. The 11 people I know of that died from COVID and I know it's COVID. I looked at the multiple people that I know personally that are family of mine that almost died from uh, uh, organ failure from yeah. COVID. Many of them with underlying conditions. I did the best research I could do. I have family that works for CDC and CDC Ooh, I got some words for, for you, goofy bastards. But for right now, that, that I did the research I could do, and I realized that as far as taking a vaccine, the, effect is, the effectiveness of a vaccine is going to be what do we trust? Like, I had an interesting conversation with somebody, right? I was like, he was super-duper anti-vaccine, but he was doing unlike we're doing tonight. He was very judgmental of anyone that took the mm -hmm. vaccine because he was like, yo, you're a sheep. I was like, hold on. Do you take a prescription medicine? What does that have to do anything? I was like, just yes or no. Give me a chance. Do you take a prescription medicine? Yeah. For what? Hypertension, cholesterol. You, you join in 70% of the population. Yep. Now check this out. If, you're, if, if you think that the United States government a COVID outbreak to kill you, then you have an overinflated sense of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the United States government, they drop little things in your water. The yeah. United States government does not need a vaccine to kill anybody. Look at your prescriptions that you're taking to keep your blood pressure down, to keep your cholesterol down, for your anxiety. If this government wants to get you, they will. It doesn't take it doesn't take anything like a virus. This outbreak real. It was global. It is not the it, it has nothing to do with the overabundance of colorism. Black mm -hmm. people are always targeted everywhere. But COVID hit everybody. They're not telling black people alone to go get vaccinated. They're telling everybody to get vaccinated. So if you and I are going to get wiped out by the government or something like that, they're doing it to us all. So let me say this about the vaccine. Double vaccinated. Wife is double vaccinated. 
My daughter just got her second shot. She's 18 years old. She just got her second shot over this past weekend. What what the what the uh, CDC did? I feel like the president did. So happy to have a different one. But all politics is nonsense to me. All of them is dogs. All of them. So my thing is this: they succumbed to financial pressure. Starting to cave in because people are thinking they got it. Do you know what they just did to us actually with this announcement? All of a sudden, the last mandate that was going to be removed was going to be the mask. Mm -hmm. The last thing that that was going to be removed. All of a sudden, they get on television and they go, yo, just as, yo, check this out, y'all. You double vaccinated, go go live your life. Why did that, why, that, bam, boom. You wonder why people don't trust them to put nothing in their arm? I'm not, how, how did we go from one extreme to the other extreme so quickly? Here's what they're doing, in my opinion. Nothing but herd immunity, and they're doing it in a more slick way where when Trump did it, he didn't care if you died. I think that this administration is kind of like, yo, I don't know what else we can do. We can't keep, they are letting us get out here now. They are literally going to let us do herd immunity and they are going to hope that the vaccine in itself can keep us out of dire consequences with herd immunity. And they should have just said that. If you're not taking the vaccine, trust me, I got you. Because Lord knows I sat up there a long time and I was like, yo, B, I can't believe I'm getting ready to go do this. Moody, there's two things I want to attribute to your dialogue. You made some great mm-hmm. points. Um, mm-hmm. You attaining the vaccine to protect other people is the same mm-hmm. reason people like me who um, choose to digress from the vaccine refuse to go in public without a mask, right? It's respect for you, like you had the respect for me to, to get mm-hmm. vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And you made another great point regarding things like blood pressure. I was mm-hmm. just diagnosed a few weeks ago with stage two high blood pressure. They uh-huh. offered me- Hypertension, uh-huh. Right? And Queen spoke about holistic ways of going about taking care of things like that, which is what I did. I didn't take mm-hmm. the medicine that the hospital gave me. I chose, mm-hmm. I chose natural remedies, mm-hmm. changing my diet, changing my intake, changing my sugar, removing sodiums, you know, workouts, walking, and shit like that took my blood pressure in a few weeks down from 130 down. over 90 to 137 over, over 87, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's really not about the medicine. It's about your choices, whether mm-hmm. it be pertaining to your diet, you know, you have to respect the boundaries of other people. And I think that was a great point you made. You chose yeah. to get vaccinated to protect people who feel like I feel. We choose to wear masks consistently to, to protect yeah. people who feel to like protect you. us. Exactly. And that's what that's what this is about. And like I gotta tell y'all, man, I was in um the last week, a week before last, I was in uh Brunswick, Georgia. I made a video about it that I didn't post because we were staying at the embassy suites, but the, 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 it's a tiny little city. It's a tiny little city. It's, the population is like a couple of thousand people in that particular little city, but they have a hundred COVID rate per seven days. That's a lot when you're just talking about just a, a couple of thousand people per city. So I would walk around the hotel because I'm a big time walker. I got great blood pressure, but I'm a big time walker I love walking because I do conference calls. I record when I walk. I do a lot of stuff. And so when I went to Brunswick, it's the most irresponsible place that I've been since COVID. Because I cut my travel down tremendously. Business and pleasure. Right. They right. don't care. It's Trump flags all over the place. And it's da, da, da. And let me tell you something about rebellion. See, what a kill us all, it's not going to be an intelligent person that doesn't trust the vaccine. You gotta, we gotta stop vilifying people that don't trust a certain portion of science because if we if we start vilifying people that are logical, then we are programmable like they said. Right. Then we right. are sheep like they said. But the mask is one thing that you can't get around. 
when you travel outside of this country, when you go to China, excuse me, when you go to Japan, when you go to uh, Africa, when you go to certain sections in this world, when people are sick, the village dress up. Mm-hmm. When, when there's, when there, you go over to Japan, they have a smog issue. People where they walk around with masks, it's just common sense. Right. I don't, I don't only want to protect myself. What the government just told us a couple of days ago, they said, we're going to depend on the honor system. So you're telling me you're going to depend on the same Americans that flagrantly let you know, I don't give a damn about a mask. I ain't got to wear no mask. I'm an American. I'm a patriot. You taking my rights. This is slavery. Because when your mask becomes slavery, you've completely lost your mind and you politicize everything. Yep. You got to you got to understand something. There is no honor system in this country. You got to understand that. Honor is maybe amongst us. Honor is maybe amongst the people that you know. I'm not trusting the Trump supporter to look how I know if he vaccinated or not. I'm not going out here, yo, I'm double vaccinated. You know what I do with yo. my double vaccinated ass? I put my mask on. That's I like, social distance like, from everybody like, anyway. What you're saying is the it's the equivalent of mm-hmm. trusting a person in a restaurant who makes your food to go in the bathroom and wash their hands. Right. It's the equivalent. Right. I totally understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is no we don't we don't do honor here. We 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 say blue lives matter, but we don't give a fuck about cops, man. It, yo. Sean, no disrespect to, to the white members of the audience, but these white folks don't give a damn about no cop, man. Blue Lives Matter don't even exist. They kill more cops than anybody else annually. And on the planet Earth, white people kill more cops than anybody else. They only care about Blue Lives Matter because of Black Lives Matter. They don't. We don't have an honor system. We don't have people that care enough about me. I, don't, I know Sean Garvey personally. I know Rolla. I, the, the king, my honor, my pleasure, man. I can't wait to chop it up with you in the future. And the right. queen can't wait to chop it up with her in the future. But I'm going to look at them just like Sean Garvey or Roland. When I'm around them, me and my double, my double vaccinated ass, I'm going to be protective because I don't want nothing happening to that man. And right. I don't want nothing happening to that woman. And the fact that she's vaccinated and he's not, he ain't no less intelligent or more intelligent than anybody else. He made a sound decision in his mind that this is not the time. He has evidence to back it up. He has examples to back it up. We t- we made a choice. He made a choice. One day, he may wake up and go, you know what? This is something I could do. Because I've been doing everything the right way anyway. He may never wake up to that reality. And let me tell you something. If anybody supports you, King, it's going to be me still sitting here saying to myself yo i took this shot and i just realized that they hustled me maybe not the virus is real mm-hmm. they just mm-hmm. gave me a shot in my arm and they just came from left field and they just said oh yeah we changed everything y'all if you double vaccinated go hang with a bunch of unvaccinated people because they're on an honor code and they'll let you know if they vaccinated or not go hang with them drink smoke da 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 when you smoke or you vape or you do anything, just to let you know, the only time that vaccine, tra- the only time that virus travels farther than your saliva, smoke. Smoke travels farther than saliva. The mm-hmm. virus attaches to the smoke. So if I'm going to go to a bar and I'm going to be around a bunch of people that are willy nilly and I'm sitting up here like a dummy because I think I'm double, you can get a flu shot and get. In a, you can put on a condom and have a baby or catch HIV. Right. There's, right. there's nothing nothing guaranteed in this world. So Sean Garvey, my stance on that is the same. I detest people. I I have gotten in fist fights. Uh, Sean, I don't know if you know about me in the in the knockout in Kroger's over the dude that took his mask off and tried to cough in my face. And I was like, see, now I got to wash you because you shouldn't have did that because I wasn't doing anything for you to do no shit like that. I mean, it's... I detest you if you don't care about your fellow man. But if you don't want to take that vaccine, anybody is like, yo, you messing it all up. No, you're not. You're taking your time 
and you're trying to figure out how in the hell you can get a vaccine that somebody told me it's going to take a minute for us uh, to get this thing. And then I'm, I'm, on, the, on the very next breath, they told me to go hang out. I look at people that don't have that vaccine right now with a logical state of mind, like I still wear my mask. I look at people like that as hyper intelligent over a lot of people that just blindly ran out. No research, no so, nothing. So, so, just blindly so. ran out and took a needle in your arm, ain't read shit, ain't so, look at nothing. I'm so how I feel about that. Adamant about mm -hmm. my health and the well being mm -hmm. of the people around me, as well as the people that I care about, that I'll put on a mask knowing that I'm not vaccinated, going to a venue or you know, a place of business and see a bunch of people in there who obviously might be, you know, in there with no mask because they double vaccinated. I won't go in with a mask on my face. If mm. this is a comfortable space for you, respectfully, I'll allow you to do what you're doing. I'll come back Facts. another time. Facts. I'll come back Facts. another time. Facts. So that's that. Sean Gravy, one more thing. If I can tell it super duper quick, you should have known this was going to be a part one and part two where you got yeah. it. You got yeah. these people on the phone, especially the long-winded three to six hosts of yours. But let me tell you all a quick story about a, a COVID guy. He was an associate of mine. Can't say he was a friend or anything, but he's a human life. He was a good guy. The things we didn't gr get agree on are irrelevant. I'm talking to him on the phone one day about a contract. And we're sitting on the phone and he starts... He had hypertension, uh, about 70 pounds overweight. He was in the ATL clubs since COVID, never stopped. Uh, mass, no nothing, just went about his business doing his thing, didn't believe, and he was like, yo, we straight. So I'm talking to him on the phone one day, I'm giving you the super short version, talking to him on the phone, and all of a sudden he's talking to me and he's like, yeah, man, like the only thing I don't agree with you is the bubba, the bubba, the, the bubba, the. And I was like, say that again. I hear what you said. And he was like, yo, I just don't uh, because I can't do because the, the. I was like, yo, dogs, what you I know he's a heavy drinker. And I was like, mm -hmm. yo, what you sipping on, man? And he was like, I got the, 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 the. I said, hey, yo, yo, bro, real quick. Where's your wife at? Because I just talked to you. We've been talking for about seven minutes. I heard your wife's voice. Go get your wife. He was like, "Why well, I got the 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 And I was like, yo my, yo, my dude, you're having a stroke. You're having a stroke. Mm. I'm talking to you on the phone, and I recognize you're having a stroke. Mm. It's about 20 minutes from me. So I, I don't know his wife's number and whatever. So I'm like, all I hear is this. Oh, hello. Mm. Get him. Got my cell phone up, jumped in the car, whip across town in 20 minutes in about 12 minutes flat. Get to his house. I'm beating on his door. His wife knows me, but not like that. I go brushing past her. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? She called the cops on me. This is a couple of months. This is about five months ago. I run down to the base and I said, something's wrong. She runs down behind me. He's face four, he's face first on the floor. He's falling straight on his face. He's bust his nose open and everything. They we call 911. They come, nobody is thinking COVID at this time. He they they come and get him. He goes to the hospital. He dies four days later. And it is proven because they had all his met. He was doing something properly until COVID came. And all his numbers jumped through the roof. Now you can say whatever you say. People say, well, they're going to the hospital and they injecting them and they counting everything for COVID. Listen, bro, I ain't got all I ain't got all that time for that. I ain't got time for that, man. Make a decision, do what you think you're gonna do. Here's what happened to him. He had a massive heart attack and a stroke at the same time. By the time they got him to the hospital, he was already fried. They found out that he had. All of his blood levels was off since COVID came from his last doctor's appointments where they was trying to get his numbers down a little bit. He caught COVID. COVID did. They ran wild <laughs> on his liver and his kidney and his body reacted. 
He had a monumental failure. That man died and left behind kids and he left behind a wife. And it was cold. It was cold. Don't tell me about masking. Don't tell me about nothing. Listen, if you don't care for yourself, you got to care for something else. But if you don't take that needle, always, always keep an ear to you in case you found you find something out later that I should have been wise enough to wait for whatever. And that man died from ignoring. And I'm going to tell y'all, you can still die because we still doing 30,000 cases a day in the United States of America. Man, listen, even to add to that, something mm -hmm. I'm just speaking in terms of black males at this point. We don't consider ourselves enough to first and foremost be aware of our own health. We hate doctors. Ooh, we'll that's another podcast. Yeah. So uh, it can kill us before mm -hmm. we can pay attention to our well-being. Yes, sir. That's something that we got to do better at from the jump. Mm -hmm. From mm -hmm. the jump. Sean Gary. We agree with, with, with <laughs> man. It's real talk. Yeah, Mr. Sean yeah. Garvin, let's hear your view of why you're not taking the vaccine. Sorry, we Roller. can't. We ran out of time. We're running out of time. <laughs> part two, part two, Sean Garvin, cut part two. Yeah, it's gonna have to be a part two to this shit for sure. For sure. Queen, at, you know, uh, I feel oh bad. The queen, the queen, she dropped jewels every time she spoke. Yes, yes. Where's the queen, y'all? I mean, Queen Michelle. Okay. I'm still here. Michelle, Michelle's listening. Michelle's listening. Um, to give you a quick version before we close out the show. And I can give uh, you my quick version too. Mine could be less than three <laughs> minutes. Uh, <laughs> guaranteed. Um, the quick version is that for me, I do not feel comfortable with the government's interference into dictating what I should put in my body. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. going to leave that in part two of the podcast. DJ All Roll. Right. And here's my <laughs> reason that? why um, I got it and my son got it because I got tired of my son getting sick when he attends school because schools are going to reopen fully. And when he was at his old school, he got uh, strep throat for four years. That don't make <laughs> any damn sense. I got strep throat once. How the hell he got it four times, four or five times? He knew the symptoms of it, so I knew how to get him vaccinated. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I'm going to get into it is that I had COVID back in February. Right. I personally had, and I got to take care of my mother. I'm a caretaker, so I cannot play around with that. I right. had to get the shot to make right. sure because she got hers and all that stuff. And basically, my immediate family has it has got the, the vaccine and all that. So I had to get it and all that stuff. So I'm not going to go into more further than that. That's how I feel about it. it hey, right. When we get back from part two, Sean Garvey, I know you knew this was going to be a two-parter, but let me just say, when you do your part two, please somebody write down. I'll write it down if I remember. We want to talk about what the government mandates, government mandating, hey, brother, if you got insurance, if you got a driver's license, government mandate a bunch of stuff. For you is not just what you put in your arm. The government mandate a bunch of stuff. And I always tell people, you, we're going to be half or we're going to be full with what we allow the government to mandate. Because by yeah. that, by that simple standard, that means every Trump supporter that said, I ain't going to let the government tell me to put on a mask. I would think that if the government can't mandate anything for you, that means all the Trump supporters should now, in defiance, start putting their mask on. Wouldn't that be lovely? Because they, the government mandates almost every aspect of your life. You work hard and you pay more taxes than you're supposed to by law, and they mandate that. Because if you if you reject it, you ask to go to jail or you get audited. So I think what they mandate should be a discussion in the next show as well. Hey, Michelle right. and uh, Mr. Moody, it's been a pleasure meeting both of you today. And same here, absolutely. Likewise, yeah. it's a different yeah. type of commitment, man to man. Salute, King. man mm -hmm. How you reach this point, and I wish you nothing but success in the future and your endeavors and your relationship, man. Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Yeah. Thank you. Yo, same to you. Yeah. Thank you.
Queen, uh, yeah. Queen, you're awesome. Yep. I'm sorry we talked so much. Sean Garvey knew. I thought he was going to. I thought he, I thought he was going to kick me off. Nah, I, I didn't know. Maybe I was minutes. drunk again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's hey, so Mr. So hey, Mr. Moody, where can people follow you, man? Hey, listen, family, listen, y'all. If, if you want a dose of uh, right here on Beat Break Radio FM.com, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, man. Brand new show every Monday. Every once in a while, I give y'all a replay because I have to. But a brand new show every Monday. We replay that show Tuesday through Friday in real time, 3 to 6 p.m. on Beat Break Radio. FM.com. Please, family, remember to download that Anchor FM app. When you go to BeatBreakRadio.com, go to your upper right-hand side and get that Anchor FM app because we're trying to build that up. It's a beautiful app to grow the brand. You guys can find me. If you want what you heard tonight with a, a lot more curse words, then I'm your show. I'm the Three, uh, 3 to 6 p.m. ride. We got two hours of pure, unadulterated talk. We don't do a lot of celebrity meat riding. We talk a lot about us. We talk a lot about serious news, funny news, motivation. We talk a lot about a lot of things. And then we got an hour of music by DJ Naturel, y'all. Some of the dopest playlists that you've heard from 5 to 6 p.m. Come check me out, family. 3 to 6 p.m., a dope. If you not built language, not your show. Sometimes, <laughs> not even my own show. So y'all got to understand. When I can offend myself, I know I can offend anybody else. So if y'all want that raw doggy, y'all come check me out 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on BeatBreakRadioFM.com, y'all. And thank you, Sean Garvey. Thank you, everyone. Nah, yeah, no problem, man. You always a you always fam here to the platform, man. You are no stranger. Hey, the Griff man, a, a part of our family as well, too, man. Where can people follow you, Griff man? I'm gonna keep it simple for y'all. I'm on every social media platform: Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. But if you want to find it in one place, if you want to consolidate where you have to search, www.wolfpackent.biz. That's W O L F. P A C K E N T dot B I Z. If you're looking for merch, if you're looking for interviews, if you're looking to do business, if you're looking for my social media platforms, you can find everything there. Wolfpack E N T dot B I Z. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And uh, once again, Michelle Dawes Burt, uh, she will be on in just a few minutes once again with the news update, the Beat Break Morning News in just a few moments. But in the meantime, Michelle Dawes Burt, where can people follow you? Oh, they can find me everywhere. I, too, am on all the social media platforms as Real Chicks Rock. And we have our show here with you guys on 2 o'clock every Sunday yep. where we talk about Real Chicks Rock presents Real Discussions. So I'm happy to be a part of the family. Hey. Check out the website, hey. realchicksrock.com. We got some merch out there, too. So follow us, subscribe, like, and rate, and leave comments. We'd love to hear what you got to say. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah, thank you. Thank you. 2 p.m. That's right, Michelle Dawes Bird, as well as with the Beat Break News every other hour on our platform, Beat Break 87 FM. DJ Roland, where can people follow you? And that on much as media as everybody else, I'm on the three main platforms Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Always, always follow me at DJ Roland on Instagram, Twitter, and DJ Roland Townsend on Facebook. Yeah, and as for me, you can check me out on all social media platforms. at Sean Garvey on Facebook, Sean Garvey ATL on Twitter, Instagram, at Beat Break Radio on all your social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Beat Break Radio, all in one word on YouTube. We are everywhere, Spotify, iHeart, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, under Reach One Network. And, of course, I made the big announcement just a few days ago that we are officially on Roku TV, ladies and gentlemen. So you can download those Spotify, iHeart apps to your Roku TV. And not Roku. only, yeah, not only listen, but also watch us as well. I actually saw a uh, previous clip of the Beat Break Morning Show on Roku TV, and it came out nice. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, DJ Roland, we are going to need a break from all this 
heavy and deep discussion over the past six hours. Has it been six hours? <laughs> it's been like six hours. Six. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it was it was you know, it was such a great conversation. Contact with you, Mr. Moody, same thing. I look forward to doing business with you in the future, having these yeah. type of conversations. You know what I mean? Definitely, I mean, definitely. I look forward to hey, it. Hey, 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 I just feel like I, I feel like I feel like we're being low key dissed. You know, for no, being you're not. here. I no, feel a low not. key dissing going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know it, you're not. And you're it should, and it should, Moody. it should be. I knew it was serious when Roland said no. But no. you know what? Sean Garvey. <laughs> Roland was like, no. tell him to shut the hell up. <laughs> man, shit love, you just man. unedited. You just unedited yourself, <laughs> uh, Mr. Booty. No, but you know, you, you, always, you always, would, always you would, them know the same thing, man. Anytime, boy, you mean they know it love, man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, and Griff, they, they know no you and Griff gave me a great idea. You all, you know, you and Griff gave me a great idea. And I want to pitch it to both of you all off the air. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah, you all gave me a, hey. a, a great idea. And uh, Michelle, thank you. Hey, fellas, I, w I wanted to say this. Uh, for the record, I think I'm the oldest one on the call. I'm the oldest one. I'm 53. But mm. that doesn't mean I, I want anybody to slide in the DM. I heard somebody say, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was what's your DM? What's your, your DM again? What's your DM? I'm gonna hey, hey, hey. right there. <laughs> Sean, get us out of here. Take us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Sean. Oh no, we can't do it like that. Queen, first of all, you're a black woman. You're a black woman. So if you're 53, you probably look like you're 20, uh, 18 or 19 years old. I am uh, second of all, for if, it, if it makes you feel any better. I am I suck at social media so much. I just learned how to slide in a DM like five <laughs> weeks ago. So you're safe from me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Baby. Wolfpack ENT B I Z. We here for all the smoke. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. I got to get my clothes out. got to get my clothes out theme song, ladies and gentlemen, here. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, stay tuned for the DJ. Oh, there it go. Sounds so nice. Don't you agree? DJ Roland, caffeine, energy, drink, mix coming up in just a few moments. And uh, I guess, what, tomorrow or the next day, we'll do a part two. We'll do a part two of the discussion on the vaccination and the gas shortage. All right. All right. Nice, nice. Do a part two on that, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Caffeine Energy Drink Mix right after the top of the news with Michelle Dawes Burt and much more coming up right here on the Beat Break Morning Show, the Beat Break Podcast. It's the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey and the crew.